<laughs> Domestic violence rates are increasing during COVID. This is certainly another really sad part of what we're going through. Joining us now is Dr. Laura Saunders, a psychologist at the Institute of Living. Doc, I hate to hear these statistics. It really is upsetting. Yes, serious topic alert, because this is, you know, a concern for many of us working with uh, children and adolescents and, and even um, adults as well. Um, there is higher rates of uh, domestic violence, also known as intimate partner violence, and, you know, <clears throat> financial strain, a lot of difficulty with isolation, homeschooling, you know, reducing means of access or escape out of the house is really creating a mix of factors that are making it very, very difficult for a lot of people, increasing the pressure, and then the pressure comes out as violence. Well, so often domestic violence, one of the tactics of the abuser would be to isolate someone. And, you know, a lot of people are just isolated anyway mm -hmm. right now. I know you see a lot of children. What's your concern for the kids right now? Well, actually, you know, we're not seeing as many children because and, and schools are not seeing as many children because of, of remote access and, and, you know, virtual schooling. So they're not, you know, children and adolescents are not getting as much of that outside person contact as would be really kind of a, a helpful factor or a, a protective factor for them. So that's part of the concern is that these environments are really becoming powder kegs of tension and stress and toxicity and it makes it really hard and, and it is worrisome um, for the overall mental health of the, those children and adolescents as well as the partners. Mm -hmm. we're, we're not just talking about physical abuse, Doc. We're talking about verbal and emotional, which I've, I've actually witnessed some of this stuff, like, you know, with, with people. And I'm like, you should not be talking to somebody like that. Right. And, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's not making ex excuses. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's a lot of excuses that people make. Oh, they just had a bad night or they just right. drank too much last night. It's not making excuses for that behavior because verbally abusive behavior and emotionally abusive behavior are equally as damaging as physically abusive behavior. Well, some of the symptoms, I mean, let's talk about this, anger, impulsivity, hypervigilance, fear. I mean, how do you sort it out? What's really going on if you're worried about someone and just the fact that so many people are anxious because of COVID right now? It's just, it's asking if you, if you are with someone or you know someone who you suspect might be involved in domestic violence or intimate partner violence, ask the question directly, right? That's one of the themes in, in all these topics that we're talking about here is ask questions directly. Let someone know that you're a safe person to talk to and that you're someone that they can possibly open up to. Um, means of outside access have been reduced because of COVID and increased isolation. So if you haven't seen your neighbor or you've seen bruises on your neighbor or you, or a, you know, a friend or, or an acquaintance, ask, are you okay? Is there something I can do to help you? There are resources out there. And do you, do you, uh, you know, bordering on prying, I mean, do you keep pushing the issue? Because you, obviously you know something is wrong, but if they keep saying no, I mean, how far do you go? I think that you, you always frame things in terms of an I statement. I'm worried about you. I'm concerned you don't look well. I haven't seen you out in a while. So you express your, your concerns. You also do it in the form of, um, you know, kind of feeling statements, not, not I think there's something you're not telling me, certainly not blaming or accusatory. There's tremendous shame that goes with this issue. And the, one of the ways that you decrease the shame is through validation and empathy. Mm. Mm -hmm. And we want to let people know there are places to go for help. Maybe you're going to say that to your loved one, or maybe you're listening and thinking, I need help. It's totally confidential, but you can dial uh, these numbers that are there, 888-774-2900. It's also in Spanish, 844-831-9200. And then there's the DCF hotline, too, 800-842-2288. You really encourage people to call. What are they going to find on the other end of that line that could help them? They're going to find someone that's going to listen to them, give them access to information and resources. And the reality is it takes many tries to get out of a situation like that. It doesn't just take one try. Um, but to know that there's resources out there and even to know that the people care and that they see, that really means something. So 
offer that support and validation, especially as we're coming up into the holiday season and we can't reach out and do the things that we might typically do in, in another year. Um, so let's check in on our neighbors and friends and make sure everyone's okay. Thank you, Dr. Laura. We appreciate checking in with you.